Welcome to this second part of my video series on risk processor pipelining. I want to acknowledge that some of these slides are derived from the book Slides by Patterson and Hennessy and from the slide deck produced by Mary Jane Irwin. Remember that the classical MIPS pipeline consists of five stages named instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute, memory, and write back. Between each stage, there is a set of interstage buffers, which are registers that pass the output of one stage to the input of the next when the clock ticks. We can also represent each stage by the major data path component used in that stage, the instruction memory, reading the register file, the ALU, the data memory, and writing the register file. The benefit of pipelining comes from the ability to put all the stages to work simultaneously operating on independent instructions. The maximum benefit comes when the pipeline is full. Then each cycle, another useful instruction will complete the write back stage. We can measure the throughput performance of the pipeline by calculating the cycles per instruction, or CPI. A lower is better metric, which is ideally one for this pipeline. Unfortunately, we can never achieve one CPI and today we will explain in greater detail why that is. The primary cause for increased CPI comes from hazards. There are three kinds of hazards. Structural hazards, attempts to use the same resource by two different instructions. These hazards occur when two instructions need access to the same physical resource, and they have been avoided in MIPS pipeline through careful design that we will discuss briefly. The rest of this talk will go into detail about data hazards and how to mitigate them. Data hazards can come from R-type instructions or load word instructions, and they occur when instructions attempt to use data before it is ready, in other words, before it has been written to the register file. Control hazards will be discussed in a separate lecture. We can usually resolve most hazards by waiting, and we'll discuss how to accomplish that. The one kind of hazard that you can't resolve by waiting are exceptions. Exceptions will be a separate talk as well. If there was only one memory with a single read port, then it would be not possible to fetch an instruction and load data at the same time. You couldn't read from the same memory in the same port simultaneously. So instead, we assume two split memories, which in practice are implemented by split instruction and data caches yet another topic. In the same way as the memory, a single register file can become a structural hazard. To resolve this hazard, the MIPS design assumes that there are two read ports and that register reads occur in the second half of the clock cycle after the write back stage completes the register write in the first half. The diagram on the bottom shows how the Lowering or falling edge clock controls loading the pipeline state registers, and the rising edge clock controls when you write to the register file. The cause of data hazards is when there's a data dependency between two instructions in the program that are close together in the pipeline. There are three kinds of data dependencies. The first is the read after write, raw, or true dependency. And this is the one that causes data hazards for the in-order pipeline that we are discussing. A raw dependency occurs when the output of one instruction is the input to a second instruction later in the program. In the pipeline, the first instruction needs time to reach the write back stage before the second instruction can read the correct value from the register file. This diagram shows how the S0 register is written to by the sub instruction and read from the add I or written to by load word and read from the add instructions. The other two dependencies are the write after read, war dependence, or anti-dependence, and the write after write, or output dependency. These dependencies can be ignored for now, but they are a concern for more complex pipeline designs. Here is a graphical depiction of how the read after write dependency causes a data hazard. The result of the first add instruction is not available until it reaches the write back stage, which means the two instructions following it use the wrong value of register $1 that is read from the register file. The OR instruction gets the correct value because the register write happens before the register read in the same clock cycle. 
The situation with load word is similar, but we will distinguish it with the name load use hazard. The simplest solution for data hazards is to stall the pipeline so that the dependent instruction waits until the correct value is available in the register file. This solution has a negative effect on CPI, adding one to two additional cycles whenever there is a data hazard between instructions in the pipeline. A better solution takes advantage of the fact that the value that will be written into the register file is already available in the pipeline at the end of the stage that produces it. So we can read that value from the interstage buffer to get the correct value without having to wait for reading the register file. This technique is called forwarding or bypass. Note that forwarding paths are valid only if the destination stage that receives the forwarded value occurs later in time than the source stage. In other words, you can't forward a result from the data memory stage of one instruction to the ALU stage of the next instruction because those two stages happen at the same time. Notice that for now we are showing the forwarded data coming out of the ALU, but it is really supplied by the pipeline registers execute mem or mem to write back. Finally, the OR instruction continues to receive the value that was written to the register file and does not need to be forwarded to because the register file is written before being read. Suppose there are two instructions writing to the same register and a third instruction depends on it. Here we have an example where we have two add instructions that both, or I'm sorry, an add and a subtract instruction, and they both write into register $1, and then an add i instruction that consumes $1. In program order, the instruction that is earlier in the pipeline occurs most recently in the program and should be the one whose value is forwarded to the third instruction. In this example, the sub instruction is earlier in the pipeline than the add, and so the result of sub should be forwarded to the add i instruction. You may also think of it as being closer to the add i instruction. This diagram shows the correct order of forwarding within this example. The key to correct implementation of forwarding is that the result to forward has to be the most recently produced value in program order. The primary complications for implementing forwarding are that the forwarded value can come from any later stage in the pipeline and that there may be multiple values to choose from. As always, we can solve these decisions by implementing them with multiplexers and control signals, and the main difficulty is to implement the logic for the MUX selectors. Here we can see the basic idea of how forwarding can be implemented. A forwarding unit implements the control logic, taking as input the source registers of the current instruction in the execute stage and the destination registers of the instructions in the memory and writeback stages. The output of this logic is two control signals. Forward A controls the first input to the ALU and forward B controls the second. The signal 00, zero indicates no forwarding, 01 to select the value coming from the writeback stage, and 10 in binary to select the value from the EX mem buffer. 1, 1, or 3, is unused. Here we have pseudocode for the forwarding logic. It checks if the destination of the instruction is not $0 and if the destination will be written to, and then compares the destination register number with the two source register numbers of the next instruction in the pipeline, which are available from the instruction decode execute buffer. Here you can again see that 1, 0 in binary means to use the value from the EX mem buffers, and 0, 1 means to use the value from the writeback stage. The default value should be main 0, 0 if none of these match. The lines highlighted in red show how the logic incorporates the rule to select the earlier instruction in the pipeline for forwarding, in case there is a conflict. Here we connect the forwarding unit to the data path. For simplicity, we omitted the control line inputs connecting the EX mem reg write and mem write back reg write to the forwarding unit, but in practice, you need to also connect those control signals so that the forwarding unit knows whether the instructions in the write back and the mem stages will actually write to the register file.
A load followed by a store of the same value can be forwarded from the mem write back stage back to the mem stage with a little bit more hardware. This helps you to avoid having to load from the memory and store to the memory in a different location and read from the memory in between. The one case where forwarding cannot solve a data hazard is when an instruction reads a register following a load instruction writing the same register. The load use hazard requires the insertion of one stall to wait for the value to be available from the memory. We have to add the stall in between the load and the use in order that the forwarded value from the output of the data memory stage to the input of the execute stage is the correct value. To implement the stall, we'll add a hazard detection unit in the decode stage that checks if the instruction currently in the execute stage is a load word instruction with a destination matching one of the source operands of the instruction in decode. If a match is made, the hazard unit will stall the pipeline for one cycle. Stalling the pipeline is accomplished by making the control signals in the, in the decode execute interstage buffer be zeros, which changes the dependent instruction into a no-op and by disabling writing of the PC register and the IFID interstage buffers, which causes fetch and decode to repeat what they just did. For the load use hazard, a single stall cycle is all that is needed and the forwarding logic can handle the rest. Here we can see how the hazard unit fits in the pipeline. It gets the, in, it gets the fetch decode source registers from the instruction bits and receives the decode execute RT and decode execute mem read from the interstage buffer of the preceding instruction. When a match is made, it disables the writing of PC and instruction fetch decode interstage buffer and drives the control signal to zero. In reality, only the signals reg write and mem write need to be zero. The other signals can be don't cares as long as we prevent the stall instruction from updating the state of the registers.